everyone. Thanks for this opportunity to share our, our experience in RefCon. Today, we are going to present the progressive learning from recent remote operating support provided by our team in 2020 and this year from Houston to different sites around the world. I am Juan Sanciviero, Wood Technical Services Manager. I've been in this position for the last three years, 15 years in Wood Foster Wheeler and with early experience in Venezuelan refineries. And during the last year, together with our technology and operation specialists, I have participated actively in remote support to delay cocker units. Fredis Guanipa, our specialist in operation, will be co-presenting with me in a few minutes an interesting experience. This is a summary of the content of the presentation. Background is the first remote support to an online spalling in Middle East. Case one is a long-term support to a new refinery in South America, including training, commissioning, startup, stabilization, and Tehran. Case two is a fast track support for a demonstration Tehran to a delayed cocker unit in South Asia. And finally, we will provide progressive learning conclusions. As background, we present a delay cooker unit designed by Foster Wheeler in 2010 for processing 40,000 barrels of BR from Urals and Siberian crudes, four cop drones, two three passes Foster Wheeler double fire heaters. And here we provided site support during commissioning training startup that was in February 2019. The test run and the first online spalling in January 2020, 11 months after the startup. Then we provided remote support to the second online spalling. Okay, so due to pandemic, we increased the frequency of virtual meeting with our TSA clients. Our specialists in Houston became more available to support operations remotely. And on April 2020, we supported the first online spalling, so-called online square spalling. We improved the procedures with better transitions using high pressure steam in transitions, hydrocarbon to water and vice versa, making the transition more stable. We extended the spalling over the cock drum switch and we added an additional step at high constant spalling water flow. Finally, we make the thermal sh cycling shocks more effective. So this support of two days, approximately four to five hours per day, gave us enough confidence to make this extensive for any kind of operational remote support, like a few full startup and a test run. Now, Freddy is going to present the next case. All right, Juan, thanks. Uh, let's go share my screen. All right. Uh, my name is Freddy Juanipa. Uh, I work in um, the technology group, operation, commissioning, and startup uh, department. I have been involved in 10 different COCA unions in the last seven years. And um, it is a pleasure to share our experience with the current COVID-19 uh, pandemic. 2020-2021, um, new Foster Wheeler 2 co drone COCA unit was commissioning and put in service in South America. We gave support in different phases as construction support, PNC, DCU training, field and online, vessel inspection, commissioning, and a startup support. And the final phase was the unit stabilization and performance test. We worked together with the client for several months. Okay, again, from October 2020 to January 2021, we were provided support in different phases. 
as operator training, pre commissioning, commissioning, and a startup, unit stabilization, and performance tests. Also, we are going to talk how was the communication from Houston to South America and to try to involve in the most important lineup procedures and adjusting operation condition. Communication was the important key and target to get a successful a startup safely. When you are thousand miles from the site where you're supposed to provide support, you need to work really tight with the client. Our communication tool were Microsoft Teams, DC, DCS online access, really helpful tool to see unique condition, chat, test, back and forward to check pictures, video and document. And due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we relocated our office to the garage. You see the picture, we have our one advisors, uh, Bartolo working at night shift. So we make our control rule, especially when you have a, a, a kid on home. All right, we're commissioning a startup Coker team. We provide all the ex expertise and background experience from, uh, from our side, 24 hours, 20, uh, seven days, and four months. So our team was uh, two operational advisors working by shift, one technology specialist, one project manager, and all the Houston support. All right, let's go start how was the training. So operator and engineer training. Before COVID-19 pandemic, we were providing pre-commissioning and field training. During the pandemic, we provided online DCU operator and engineer training. Different tools were provided like a schematic, graphic, and data, pictures, and video. And also we provide a 3D model. The 3D model that I'm going to show right now was a pretty good tool. The 3D model provides a big picture of the real life in the field. How, how was the layout? How was the valve location, equipment, process lineup? And also valve line equipment with different colors. So we teach the operator and engineer to see the operation configuration of the cold drone cycle. The 3D video helped to be familiar with the process. In general, Wolf Foster Wheeler Delia Coca Science Technology is raising this operator training to another level. So in the video, you can see the colors so, of uh, green color for open valve, red color for closed valve, and also you see the different uh, color for the line, bypass line, cold drone overhead line. So it was a pretty good tool. All right, let's go now talk about how was uh, the new Coker, the case one new Coker South America. Now we are going to uh, going to share our experience, how was uh, uh, to teach the operator from here to Houston and how they follow our standard guideline, our procedures. Uh, we are going to talk about four items and the items, how, how was, how we were commissioned and start out the coca unit, how we perform on the cold drone quench it, how the coca unit was stabilized, and how to complete the performance test. All right, let's go start DCU commissioning a startup. So safety first. So we want to mention that we never move forward without the confirmation that all safety steps were completed prior to performing any activity. We gave entire support in different phases. That include vessel inspection, coca heater uh, dry out, hydrocarbon inventory, dewatering guideline, and pump out. Pre-commissioning and commissioning the unit safely. We were teaching two circulation required to ensure a really successful startup. So the first circulation was the bypass circulation. So bypass circulation. It is a closed a Coker Island circuit where the bottom of the fractionator is pumped by the heater charger pump through the Coker heater, then bypass the cold drum by the SP5 
and then going to SP3, returning to the bottom of the fractionator. What is the benefit of the bypass? Well, we uh, uh, split or we uh, have a three different phase. Core circulation is below a 95 uh, Celsius or 200 3F, allow to initiate the circulation. Coke heater, you can put the coke heater in balance draft, verify all the instrumentation flow, level, pressure, temperature, dewater, and pump out. Then we move to the next uh, stage. That's the warm circulation, 149 or 300F. So in that moment, we we'll start light on all the pileup, all the main burner, and we we'll start heating the circulation. We we'll start to confirm that we have no water in the circuit. And the next uh, step is the hop circulation. So we we'll start bringing back in receivers, we we'll start to increase our fractionated temperature profile, and we start to prepare the cold drum for the first warm up. All right, let's go talk about the first uh, the cold drum first warm up. It is one of the most important cocker procedure to complete during the commissioning and startup prior to introduce oil into the cold drum. Benefit proper co uh, cold drum warm up ensure a smooth transition from bypass to OEM. Heating cold drum over 260 Celsius or 500F uh, Fahrenheit ensure reduce the stress, the metal uh, fatigue stress. Ensure remove steam condensate by co uh, uh, by co condensate drum. Heat the cold drum by hydrocarbon vapor instead of MP steam or overheat uh, steam. So you see the schematic. It was a really pretty good tool. The blue uh, uh, arrow shows the uh, uh, bypass circulation, and when you heat the bypass circulation, that's vapor going to the cold drum, cold drum to the cold condensate, and cold condensate to the blowdown tower or, or system. All right, let's go move to the cold drum quenching. Okay. Cold drum back pressure control valve. Wolf Foster Willie Delia Coke Union has installed a pressure control valve that maintains the pressure and the cold drum is stable during the cold drum question uh, phase. That means steam and water. We are going to see example of real data from this case, case one in South America. So for the for the client in South America, they have a cooker for 55 years, 60 years. They never have a back pressure control valve. So they learn to operate the back pressure control valve. The back pressure control valve is uh, uh, located between the cold drum and the blowdown tower or blowdown system. So what is the benefit they have the back pressure control valve? Avoid potential phone overs during the steam out transition to blow down from fractionated towers. Pressure higher than the cold drum operate with we are assisting in getting liquid water, liquid water to the cold bed and minimize the hot spot. Pair cold drum pressure controller during the quench water program, reduce the steam blanket and a lower and efficient cold bed contact by liquid water. So uh, we are going to, con uh, to continue to show more schematic and also data to show you how was how was that spirit in South America. So here uh, you show how it was before when they start to operate the back pressure control valve and after when they learn to operate the back pressure control valve. You see the difference how the temperature drop in the cold drum. And when they learn how to operate the back pressure control valve, the temperature drop better. So drop together. Another example before and after. So you see uh, when they start learning, the temperature not drop really good. The, the drum, the, uh, the cold drum cool it, but the temperature not dropping like uh, we want it. So when they learn to operate the, the back pressure control valve, you see the temperature how drop together. So that we are looking for. And final, they learn something. They learn that the important, the transition, steam water transition was improved 
and the back pressure control valve was doing the rest. Another example how the, the quench over there in South America work. So if you see here in that table, we have a, a, a quench water program that was followed in automatic. So that six hour was entirely in automatic. So we fill the cold drum with what 1,020 cubic meter, and that means 207,000 gallons. And after five hours that we start that program, the, the cold drum temperature was below 149 Celsius or 300 F. So that means five hours. When we complete the entire quench water program, that means six hours, you can see there that the cold bed was below 100. That's below 100. You have a temperature in 55, 60, so the cold bed. And the temperature on the, co on the, uh, on the top of the cold drum was below uh, 128, 119. So that's amazing how the back pressure control valve helped to improve the quench and the cold drum. The final uh, slide is why it's important back pressure control valve. How the people in South America learn that is really important. Because with the back pressure control valve, we eliminate or we reduce the potential hot spot. The plugging of the channel cause problem improperly even cooling the cold bed. This is the cause for hot spot and a steam eruption when you start the cutting procedure. You see this picture, this cold drum was cooling improperly. So you have cold temperature here and you have really hot temperature here, 355 Celsius, that's really hot. And that's, we don't want it. If that happened, look at this video. This is unsafe condition that we don't want to see in the cold drum. So that was a steam eruption when they start the cutting procedure. The dust condition is, is, is reducing with the back pressure control valve. So work, follow the procedures and work with the correct back pressure control valve pressure does improve this, does eliminate this condition. All right, and uh, that's my, um, my last slide. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and I'm going back to Juan Sanzibier. Thank you, Freddy. So I'm going to present now the um, next step, the unit stabilization. And um, after the startup, there was about one month period for unit stabilization. We create an action list with about 20 main priorities to be resolved before the test run. And as you can see, most of them were discussed and resolved using the smart chat communication. For example, there was an issue to increase steam out to one cog drum. It was a check valve issue. You can see a nice x-ray of the check valve with the damage internal. Then there were some issues with water separation and water emulsions in salt water due to interface level. Also, some instrument and control valves issues that require field verification, sharing control valve and pressure gauge indication with us for verification. And of course, heaters flame tuning using videos of the flame pattern and flame color. So after solving most of the issues, the unit performance test was scheduled, product sampling frequency and methods were discussed and agreed with operation and laboratory unit stability was monitored and product specification were confirmed. So you can see here the stability of the fractionator temperature profile, products 
during the four 20 hour cycles that the performance test last. So this was case number one, a full remote startup and test run successfully completed. Now I'm going to present case number two. So finalizing the test run in South America in January 2021, we received a call from South Asia to support a fast track demonstration test run at maximum capacity. This, this unit was designed by Foster Wheeler in 2009-2010 for 32,000 barrels, two drums, and one six-pass single fire heater. Wood Foster Wheeler supported on-site inspections, commissioning, training, and a startup in June 2019. Then, when conditions were adequate, it was decided to perform this demonstration test run with remote support in January 2021. So, the remote support allowed a fast track response within a few days. Putin was ready to support a refinery in South Asia with 12 hours time frame difference from Bartolo's garage control room home offices, one operation advisor, one process specialist, the technical services manager, an advisory from the specialist in Houston, provided support for two days stabilization and three days the run. The main tool was the remote access to the DCS for monitoring, and a chat group that I call Trouble Chatting between Wood Team and the refinery, allowing to obtain excellent results from this test run remote experience. So here is a nice example of, of Trouble Chatting from this experience. So during the first day of stabilization, we check the unit conditions and produce lab results. And we notice high C3 plus content in fuel gas, more than 5%. So we ask the refinery operation, why you don't increase the lean oil to the absorber? It is very low, it is around 35%. Does the NAFTA stabilize NAFTA circulation or, or recycle to the absorber? But they say no. It is not possible. We have a high level in the bottom of the absorber. Wow, so we, we think about it and, and typically there is no level there. So there should be a hydraulic limitation in the line or in the absorber feed condenser. Maybe you do salt formation. So quickly, we check the PNIDs and we propose to use a bypass startup line to route the bottom of the absorber downstream the condensers. And you can see here it worked. The level went down below zero. So the, the lean oil was increased to about 60, 65%. And then the gas plant was adjusted to take samples. The next day, results were great. The C3 plus in fuel gas was less than 1%. And LPG product increases noticeable, almost double. So that, that was a case, something that uh, was affecting the, the refinery or the, the DCU for several months, and it was solved during this period of test run. Another issue detected in during the test run was a high CCR and asphalting content in the heavy gasoil. So we typically recommend a good commissioning of the wash oil spray nozzle. That's very important. And also monitoring the performance of the sprays by checking the differential pressure versus flow rate and compare with the design. 
during operation. However, if that is not possible, a simple test can tell you if your spray nozzles are healthy or plugged. If you increase the wash oil rate within the design range and the CCR asphaltins and metals increase and recycle decrease, decreases, there is potentially plugging and of course there is entrainment. So it is not possible to resolve this issue until next turn around, but maybe, the, I mean the, the plugging issue, but maybe it is possible to reduce the velocity and entrainment by increasing quench oil and recycle or by increasing the operating pressure. So those are the, the kind of recommendation we, we give to the, uh, this refinery during this stabilization and test run. Okay, now the progressive learning conclusions. So the first one, it is key to establish good communication channels from the beginning. It is not only enough to have access to the DCS 24 seven, but it is important to contact quickly the right person in the refinery to take actions opportunely. Second, the re remote support offers multiple advantages over site support, such as a fast setup, the best specialists probably are available. There is a cost reduction and time saving. And also the specialists are working without side pressure to provide the better recommendations, what I call an actual call eye review from your home or from your garage. And of course, it is possible a long term or a fast track support, both with great results. Finally, here there are some comments from the refineries. And my favorite from South American DCU is that this is a great methodology that is here to stay and we were the pioneers. Thank you very much. And now we are ready for your questions. Thanks.